Don't you just love sunrise on Mercury, especially when the sun is englobed in an entire Dyson Sphere? Welcome to our review of Dyson Sphere Program, a game in which you can make something as massive as this. Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for a bit of a one-off video. So this channel is going to remain 98% Path of Exile, but this is just part of the 2% of videos that won't be. And I think a very important to start any review video with a disclaimer. For all reviews, it's essential to disclose any relationship that you have with a game publisher. Here's mine, nothing to disclose. Unless they can read minds, the game de developer doesn't know this review is happening. I paid retail price for the game and did not receive a free copy or any discounts that weren't generally available to the Australian public at the time I bought it, i.e. I got it on a Steam sale. At the time of recording this video, I also don't have any affiliate sales program for the game, although that may change in the future, and I have asked Nexus, who I do have an affiliate sales program with, to see if they can list it, and if and when that happens, it will be on sale on my Nexus store, and I will get a commission for those sales. So do keep that in mind if you are thinking of buying it, but ultimately, make your own decision. I'm going to give it a positive review, but I'm doing that at a time where there's no way for that to result in me making money. Now, Dyson Sphere Program is a game that is somewhat of a masterpiece, in my opinion, uh, and I think it will appeal to a number of Path of Exile players. Not everyone, but people that are attracted to the customization and the enormous depth of power progression in, in Path of Exile will probably find this an interesting little diversion. It's not something that has as much enduring appeal. It's a sort of game that I think probably does have 200 hours of good gameplay in it, but I don't think there'll be many people that will run up a thousand or more in it. That said, there do seem to be a number of people that have, and you know, the person that designed this Dyson Sphere blueprint is probably one of them. The game ha is in a early access officially, but it feels feature complete enough to recommend. There's a few bugs, but they're not really annoying. And this will be an overwhelmingly positive review, so let's start with a few negatives. Firstly, flight and spaceflight mechanics are clunky and awkward. There's one mechanic that is really not obvious, and that is that until you reach a thousand altitude, a thousand meters in altitude, you are gravitationally bound to the planet. Uh, once you reach a thousand, there is an instant cutoff. Uh, this is not really apparent and is something that results in a lot of counterintuitive mechanics while you're mid-flight and is particularly annoying when you slingshot around a planet that you're trying to land on. That has happened to me multiple times and it is an infuriating, infuriating experience. So that's the first thing that's annoying. That starts coming into the game when you develop flight about 15% through the game and particularly becomes important during a phase at about 30% of the way through the game when you have to manually travel between planets a lot and don't yet have access to warping. Second negative is performance feels like it'll be a huge issue on anything less than my computer. So I'm running an 11900K and a 3080 and these are keeping up well even with the sort of level of utter craziness that you see here with the Dyson Sphere going into Eclipse from a gas giant currently. Even then the game is still continuing to run smoothly. The only time it's not running smoothly is when it is carrying out an automatic save and those automatic saves are worth having. That said, I would not want to play this game on my 2016 gaming rig, and I probably wouldn't want to play it even on something that was using something like a 1070. I'm not sure how it would play on a 1070 or a 1080, but I would be looking to have something really quite powerful to play this. I also wouldn't want to play this game on hot summer days due to the amount of uh, heat that gets put out by your PC while you're running it. This is not dangerous levels of heat, but it is something that is far more than I'm used to seeing while playing other games. And as a result, you will feel like you are running a very powerful heater in your room, which is not something you want to do during summer. Perfect, however, for me as the Melbourne weather is starting to get a little bit colder as I'm making this in April. And finally, there's a few translations in the game that are bad. The English language text was not done by a native English speaker, and that will show up on occasion, especially actually really surprisingly during the first five minutes of the game. However, the good outweighs the bad a million times to one. This is a really well thought out puzzle experience on a truly epic scope. One of the things that this game does incredibly well is presenting you with an array of resources and ways to manipulate them where the your as your priorities change throughout the game, as you advance various points in the tech tree, you're going to want to start to do different things and you're going to want to start having different solutions to problems you've already solved. One good example of this is hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen is something that you will get as a waste product early in the game. You will build up heaps of it. You will not be able to get rid of it all. Then eventually you will research Casimir crystals and suddenly you will need all the hydrogen you can get. Then eventually you will gain the ability to mine gas giants and from that point onwards you will have more the hydrogen than you can ever possibly use and you can go back to burning it off if you want to do so. 
So this is just one example of one of the many different types of resources you'll deal with. The game can really be broken down into six components. There is working on blue science, then red science, then yellow science, then purple science, then green science, and then ultimately on white science. Each of these is a step up in complexity and a considerable one, and you will find that you will have an enormous amount of things, of problems to work out at each of these phases. And each one of them will present a few new interesting tools that you can use and then have to go and retrofit into your existing solutions if you like them. There is so much scope creep in this game. At the start of the game, your only ability to gather resources is to mine them yourself, uh, although this period doesn't last very long. So if I find some of this stone here, and these are some very old mines of mine, uh, this here shows you that I'm getting about one unit of stone per second while I'm mining this. Well, I have since set up automation, uh, both these traditional mining machines that you see here and also the upgraded version that you get very late in the game progression. And these are passively producing something like uh, 2,700 stone per minute, which is all being produced all around the universe and is also being automatically shipped to wherever I have told the game to ship it to. Like a capricious genie, the game will not interpret your wishes the way that you want it to interpret them, it will interpret them very literally. And as a result, sometimes you will spend a whole bunch of space warpers spending, sending things all around the galaxy to places that you don't want them because you made the mistake of telling it to do the wrong thing. But it does listen to you. It just listens exactly to what you said, not to what you wish you said. So I now have facilities that passively produce enormous amounts of products that were things that took a substantial effort to produce individual copies of early in the game. Uh, the graphics in this game are truly spectacular, and I think they're a real high point. Uh, you know, looking at this Dyson Sphere, it's something that looks incredible and also stays looking good as you get closer to it. So if I go and I crash through the Dyson Sphere, uh, you'll get to see it up a bit closer as I do that. Currently, I'm using the very uncomfortable uh, sailing and flight mechanics. These are one of the negatives, but I'm just going to crash through this. Uh, you don't actually impact it, you'll, you'll fly straight through it. And you'll see that the game will continue to look smooth while I'm doing this, despite the fact that I am recording and it looks truly amazing inside the Dyson Sphere as it's being put together, and also looks still incredible when you are flying through in between different layers. Uh, you'll see there's a large amount of detail on it, and the game just still manages to perform pretty well during this period. A little bit of frame loss here and there, but it's not very much. And this is one of the more complicated structures that I have seen. Uh, you have seen I have seen a couple of people in the Dyson Sphere pro uh, program community that have made uh, Dyson Sphere layouts that are designed to crash your, your, the game somewhat. And I'm not running one of those. I'm running one of the one of the more complex of the ones that's not a troll layout. And it just looks amazing and continues to do so from all sorts of different radii that you, radii that you can look at it from. So the graphics are probably the second highest point behind the, just the core gameplay. Uh, the third thing is the sound. It has This game has very basic music, but it just works. It's an inspiring soundtrack that just, it, it evokes wonder somehow. Uh, it's a very basic one, and it's something that should not be a high point of the game, but just manages to be really, really impressive. Anyways, I've just got to say that Dyson Sphere program has been incredible. And at this point, I'll cut over to showing off the blueprint system. Okay, so here I want to demonstrate the blueprint system. This is the thing that allows you to scale up from being a single solar system with small extra outposts to being an empire that spans dozens or even a hundred or more worlds. And what it lets you do is copy paste a collection of buildings together. So you can also share these with the community and the various blueprints that you see here are a mixture. Some I've designed myself, but most of the better ones are ones that other players have come up with. So here you will see a blueprint that is designed to mass produce a consumable called electromagnetic turbines, and it produces them in enormous quantities. What this blueprint will do is use about a thousand buildings and I will just plant it here and that will issue a command to the mecha to produce all of this thousand plus buildings. Now these have to come out of my inventory and so it is going to take what I've got and then the shortfall will be listed up above. My shortfall is 25 power towers and 145 solar panels. Actually those 145 solar panels are at one of the poles of this planet so that's okay. 
Uh, at this point, I'm going to produce some of the buildings that I am missing, which is going to require a number of copper bars in order to do it. And that will facilitate the process. I could actually expedite this if I was more efficient and particularly if I was more well thought out in exactly what my mechanics of expansion were, uh, I would not find myself in a spot where I have to go and scrounge for materials. But this is a base that I prepared earlier in order to have a number of resources available on command. And I'm just gonna wait for these to build up a little bit more and I'm gonna take some of them out and build some of these missing tower, uh, build some of the missing items that I require in order to finish producing this. While I'm doing this, my mecha is sending out a number of construction drones. I am highly, highly, highly advanced in the tech tree of the game, and as a result, these construction drones are completing all of these tasks very quickly. Uh, earlier in progression, this would be a much slower process, but still not agonizingly slow or anything like it. Lastly, all that's required is just to customize this new setup to the e explicit environment that it's in, which is going to be as simple as connecting power the last way. In fact, I'd already done that. And so now everything is built. That is a blueprint. All I need to do to finish this off is add in various consumables to the building and we are done. That is what blueprints are like and they are one of those features that really does allow the game's scope to expand enormously. Uh, this game has been really fantastic in just creating that sense of tremendous progression, but it's progression that always feels needed until at least you've beaten the game and then it's all just playing to continue expanding your empire for the sake of expansion, which is fun too. That's all I've got. May your have interesting results.